Of course, Bibb County now bracing for uh, later on tonight. The uh, emergency department leaders gathered for a news conference earlier today to talk about uh, some of the dangers that we could face. Pepper Baker was there and she joins us now. Oh, actually, different store. Here we go. <laughs> and as Michael moves into our area tonight, uh, in case you're getting ready to lose power, water, or unable to get gas for a few days. Yeah, Austin Love, who's now out in the storm lab trying yes. to find damage earlier today, went to a gas station, talked with some folks getting ready for what Michael could bring. It's a race to be ready. Cars coming and going at the pumps as people await Hurricane Michael's arrival. Just filling up with gas with the hurricane getting all crazy and stuff like that. I want to at least make sure my tank's full. Rudd Shepard isn't taking any chances, filling up his truck, even taking extra fuel for the road. If they uh, order an evacuation or something, I want to be able to go without running out of gas outside of town. It's a familiar feeling for Seth Martina. Him and his family have gone through this before. We were through the last hurricane that came to Macon and uh, we didn't have any damage. We didn't lose power. We expect to lose power on this one. Many gas stations in the way of Michael are facing fuel shortages. Roughly one third of gas stations in Panama City, Florida are completely out of gas. Here in Macon, shortages were not an issue today. We've seen a lot of more traffic and people being worried about it, but hopefully everything goes well. But the future, it's unclear. Bobby Patel owns Gary Bait and Tackle. While he isn't running short on fuel right now, he's unsure what the rest of the week holds. They will know after what's going to when the new supply is going to come in. There's still nobody clearly saying about a new supply when they're going to be delivered. So, from fuel to supplies at local stores, canned goods starting to be picked over, and bottles of water scarce. Many hoping for the best, but preparing for the likely long night ahead. Right, that was Austin Love reporting. As Hurricane Michael's strength increases, of course, now it's starting to go down, but still it's a very strong storm right now. Of course, there's a lot of folks in uh, Macon and Bibb County, including emergency leaders, gathering to warn folks about the dangers. Pepper Baker joins us live from the County Emergency Center to tell us what they're expecting a little later on tonight. Yes, Emergency Management Agency Director Spencer Hawking says everyone in Bibb County should stay put tonight into tomorrow as Michael rages through. Where you're going to eat dinner tonight is where you need to be throughout the storm until breakfast tomorrow morning. So once again, an overnight storm, stay in, there's no need to be out. Bibb County Emergency Management Director Spencer Hawkins is expecting Michael to make a major impact in Bibb County. Maximum sustained winds are at 150 miles an hour. This is the first Category 4 storm that has ever made landfall since they started keeping records in 1851. And he says damage will be done. You can expect to see some damages to roof trees down, blocked roads because of significant debris, as well as power and communication outages. County spokesman Chris Floor says they're putting everything in place to respond as quickly and efficiently as they can for the storm. Right now the activity is more along the lines of gassing up the trucks, making sure equipment works, and we're staging crews around the county to be prepared for once that storm passes, uh, they can have, begin immediately clearing the roads. Sheriff David Davis says he's got his department ready as well. Uh, we have extra patrols going to be out tonight. We have inmate work crews that are going to be out. But the thing we want to stress is to stay off the roads. Unlike Irma that came through in the middle of the day, this one is going to come through in the middle of the night. Making bib government will be closed Thursday. Hawkins says they need that time to assess the damage. This will allow our crews the amount of time to get out there and do our damage assessment do any potential debris removal and make sure that once again the roads are safe before you get out and do your own damage assessment. Craig Ross from Macon Transit Authority says they will not be operating tomorrow. Um, they will continue until 9 p.m. today and they will be back up and running around 520 Friday morning. Live in Macon, Pepper Baker, 13 WMAZ News. Thank, you, Thank Pepper. you, Pepper. Yeah, crews are in place overnight for several Central Georgia curfews, rather, including several Central Georgia counties. Lawrence County is one of them. Wanya Reese really spent the day there and shows us how the county is getting ready. People in Lawrence County are preparing for Michael. With the city under a hurricane warning, some people aren't taking any chances. Well, we're going to be closed tomorrow morning to you know, see what it's going to be like. 
and starting at midnight Wednesday, people in Lawrence County will have to stay off the streets. A storm like this, a big danger is people getting out and riding around and looking to see what's going on. The curfew approved by City Council will run until Thursday at 12 p.m. and City Manager Lance Jones says the county needs to be ready for power outages, possibly lasting several days. Limbs are falling, power lines are down. It is just too dangerous to be out. And With bad weather coming, Nadine Miller Hunt says she hopes people respect the curfew, but she has her doubts. I think it is. I think it's for the people's safety, you know, but I don't think everybody's going to observe it, but I think it's a good idea. If you decide to venture out after curfew, Jones says you could face a fine or even jail time. So he recommends you stay in and not put your life in danger. And a limb fall on you and kill you or you hit a power line and get killed and there's just no reason to do that. Jones says once the storm hits, emergency response will be limited. One reason that people should stay safe until the storm passes and the cleanup is underway. In Dublin, Wanye Reese, 13 WMAZ News. And if you live in Lawrence County, there is a link on our website to sign up for a code red alert to know where there are down trees or flooding. Now, there are several counties with curfews in place. Uh, Baldwin County, that starts at 11 tonight. Uh, Bleckley County starts at 8 tonight, runs through 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Crisp County starts at 8 p.m. tonight, ends at daybreak Thursday. Dooley County starts at 7 tonight and ends at 7 a.m. Thursday morning. Lawrence County beginning at midnight Thursday and ends Thursday at noon. Pulaski County starts at 9 tonight and uh, no end has been announced for that one. The city of Sandersville in Washington County has a curfew that starts at midnight and ends tomorrow at noon and as of 4.30 p.m. Macon County has also issued a curfew from 7 p.m. until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Hancock County EMA Director Mario Chapel says stay off the roads from 11 p.m. until 11 a.m. AM. Well, wherever you are safe, emergency officials stay stay off the roads, stay safe, especially during the overnight hours, and also let the crews go out and assess the damage and start the cleanup before you try and head out.